Hey, what up? It's Brad with Home Love Construction, and today we are framing hardcore. This garage edition is built out of basically block as the walls, and then the roof is wood frame. So what, is, what does that actually mean? Like, what does it mean when you build a structure out of block? What it means is you take these, which are eight inch by 16 inch block in construction. These are referred to as concrete masonry units, CMUs. So basically what the block mason does is he just stair steps, 50-50 offset. And what our guy did in, in particular, he started in the back corner of the garage, built up to his height, ran a, basically put a, put a string attached to the top of the block, ran it the full length of the wall, made sure it was level with a level, and then built his block up from there. What we get to though, is whenever we get to an opening, you'll see on the top from here all the way across to here, and it's eight inches over each of the adjacent blocks. What, this is what's called a concrete lintel or a precast lintel. And what that is, is it's essentially a U-shaped, really long piece of concrete block. Basically that gets set in place and then completely filled with mortar. And what that does is it bears the load of these blocks in the middle and whatever weight is coming down from the roof and transfers it. Now, if you remember our foundations video, these cells are where rebar stubbed up. These blocks also got poured all the way down. So this whole row of blocks on either side of the window is basically like pillars in the structure. So all of that weight from this lintel goes down all the way to the ground. Now, whenever we're talking about framing or building anything to be structurally sound, the, the key is you need to get the weight safely from the load bearing point safely to the ground. The rebar adds the rigidity as far as wind movement racking and that really is how the block goes together. For framing the roof structure, there are really two sections to it. There's the portion that I'm standing under right now at the end it comes to a triangle. So a gable is made out of just these simple triangular trusses. So the trusses basically get set up on either end and then we have them spaced 24 inches on center with blocking in between them. Now, on this portion, we have a, a big flat area. And so the way we frame it is we don't use trusses like that. We use simply what are called rafters. Now, the way that we marry these two sections of the roof together is this big, beam and that's called a an LVL or a laminated beam and so it's actually two 12 inch LVLs sandwiched together uh, and then nailed all the hell to make it structurally one piece of wood and then we nail what are called hangers into each side of the LVL it's holding the trusses and then on this side it's holding the rafters these little pieces of metal those are straps so those twist straps are in place to prevent the roof from being lifted up. Uh, there's no real good way to attach it down into the block. But in Florida, we get so many storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, you get a lot of uplift on your roofs from those heavy winds. And so this has become a major sticking point in building code. Basically, that is how our roof structure is laid out. And then on top of the deck, it's just half inch plywood all the way around. We went ahead and finished the soffit and fascia. This is some terminology that really sticks people up a lot of times. Soffit is this portion with the holes in it that goes horizontally, almost level with the ground. This aluminum wrap is fascia. The fascia itself is a wooden board running along at the end of the rafter tails. And as you can see, that soffit and fascia continuously uniform around the whole way. Other than that, our only lingering item really that we are being held up by is this guy right here. So the city of Tarpon Springs, what they required is to move the actual meter can from the middle of the roof to the outside of the roof. 
but we're waiting on the city to tell us it's okay to actually have the company come out, disconnect from the old weatherhead, and hook us up into the new weatherhead. Once that's done, we can finish our tie-in, put the roof on, shingle it, be dried in, and then we'll be done with the upper structure. We'll put our windows and doors in, stucco, paint, and this guy's done.